Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch switch our roles around so that we can let Lisa get started. Lisa is um, an art teacher currently at Dover Elementary, and she's a former Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year and also a National Excellence in Agriculture um, Award winner. So we're so excited that Lisa's here, and we hope that you have the materials so that you can participate in the uh, art projects as we go. So Lisa, we're going to turn it over to you. <laughs> All right, so I'm Lisa Storm and I taught at Kingfisher for years. I taught third grade and then I uh, retired for a year and a superintendent came and asked would I like to teach part-time music or art and I thought about teaching fifth and sixth grade boys music and trying to get them to sing and I thought nope. So I went with art plus I've always enjoyed doing art in the classroom. So um, today we're doing ag and art and we're doing several different things like some strawberries, apples, pears, uh, kind of a landscape thing. And uh, I wanted to introduce you to all these different kinds of art mediums and I'm kind of sad I'm not getting to see you uh, work with all these things and experiment with these things, but we're going to get started right away with some paint. And as you know, kids love to mess with paint and they want to paint and paint and paint. And this one, when you do the strawberries or when you do the apples, it doesn't take very much paint, watercolor. It doesn't take much to get it to work. So um, I'm going to situate my camera so that you can see what I'm doing. So you won't be seeing me anymore. I know, sad. Here we go. I'm switching around. And hopefully you can see what I am working on. Here we go. So if you don't have paint and you decided to use watercolor, I mean uh, food coloring, you just get a little bit of water in your cup and then uh, some drops of food coloring to create your paint. That will work and work just as well as watercolor. You just stir it up and use it. All right, I'm using watercolor paper, but most kids are just gonna be using copy paper. And so when I tell them to do a strawberry, you know, you've gotta give kids a place to start. And so I tell them to use their thumb because it's sort of flat and sort of rounded. And I say, that's the top of your strawberry. And I'm, when I'm teaching them, I say it to draw very lightly, but today I'm drawing dark so you can see what I'm doing. So it's kind of flat and kind of curvy. And then I'll tell them curve around the edges, come down here, make a spot that you're going to and make a, a very curvy V or a U. And so that's going to be the shape of our strawberry. Now, when you're using watercolors like this, just Crayola watercolors, I have them dip in water drop water drop water drop water drop and do a little stirring it's got to be watery i got it going now before i start painting i'm going to wet down the area that i want to paint because it's watercolor paper and that's how you do it and we know that the paint will go where the water is and it will stay away from the dry areas so i wet down the area that i want to use so when I'm trying to do the strawberry, I want it to fade from brighter red to or pink to a lighter red. So I start over here on one side and I paint in and then just let the water carry it, carry the color. I might even drop in some more water to get it to spread a little more. So I've got kind of a dark side and a light side because as you know, when strawberries are growing, they do not face uh, I mean they don't change colors all at the same time they've got a lighter side maybe a darker side and then you just have to let it be and that is hard to do <laughs> because they want to paint and paint some more but you're just going to let it be so that um, as it dries the shaded will show up okay then for the stem you just uh, dip into the green that you've done and make a little vine and when you do the leaves 
I'm kind of afraid my green is going to run into my red right here. So I'm going to stay above the top of the red to do my leaves. And you can explain to them about strawberries having lots more than just two leaves. They're used to doing two leaves on things like flowers or um, apples or whatever. And you can explain that they have all different kinds of shapes of leaves. And so uh, when you're doing the art and you're explaining the uh, techniques that you're doing, you can also talk about strawberries and how they grow. There's lots of lessons on Ag in the Classroom like Oklahoma's Berry Best. I don't know. There's several things that have to do with berries and strawberries. Now, when a strawberry is first growing, it's not red. It's um, very, very pale. And if I get too much water, like I wanted that to be a very, very pale green. And so you just use a little piece of paper towel, dab up what you don't want. We're gonna let that dry just a little bit and go ahead and do an apple. Because really with your students, you'd do several strawberries. You'd let them do several, smaller ones, bigger ones. And then as you, it starts to dry, you can see how the color is puddling or settling in one area and that's just great for shading. Now, if you don't wanna mess with watercolor, you can have them use colored pencils and different shades of red and have them practice their shading. So you would start the same way with doing the darker shade over on one side. Very, start coloring lightly because you don't want to know how dark you're going to go. Change to a different color and start blending that in. And go lighter, lighter, lighter. But talk to them about what, where we think the light source or the sun is. It's over here, so things are brighter and things are more shaded down this direction. All right, so let's do the apple. The apple, of course, is gonna be bigger. I'll just do it up here. And you tell them um, it's not a complete circle that we're making this part rounded and dip down a little, almost like you're making a heart, but not quite. And another rounded, very round. And then toward the bottom of the apple, dip up a little bit and back down. It's running into my strawberry. It will have a little bit of a stem on it and we'll just do one leaf. Now for this, I definitely want them to have um, oh, a light reflective point. And so for that, you will need like a, a white crayon because it's waxy and the watercolor will resist that area. So uh, I'm going to have, uh, you make kind of a comma shape. I know you probably can't see where that white is, but when I'm painting, you will. So we're gonna, the paint won't go there. And again, <clears throat> you pick up some, sorry, pick up some water first, spread it where you want to go. I won't go over that wax. And when you touch it, it starts spreading out and making the colors that you want. Now, you can talk about the different varieties of apples and you can say, okay, well, what if it's Gala or what if it's um, Honeycrisp or what if it's Pink Lady? I mean, you could do all sorts of things and add in some other color. Like if I wanted to add in a little bit of yellow, just let it go where it wants to go. Let some more of that pink come over here. And the hardest thing is getting them to stop because they want to keep painting. But 
uh, you can just let it dry like it is. And if you want to add more color later, you can do it after it has dried. So you kind of have layers of color going. Um, on the leaf, I think I also want to leave a little bit of uh, white space and I'm not wetting it ahead of time because I, I wanted it to be a little darker. So we're going to have the dark part of the leaf here, the lighter part on top and leaving a little bit of white space. Now, sure enough, since I was in a hurry, I got my red running into my green, but you can dab it with a little paper towel, let it kind of dry there, and go back with some more green. But that's the fun thing about watercolor is letting the colors run together and um, create the shading that you want. Now, um, as far as Ag in the Classroom lessons, you know, if you start searching and you put it by um, produce or product and you look up apples or um, fruits, there's one called an apple a day. There's things called fresh from the farm that's, I think, about um, uh, farmer's markets and what kind of things they sell. I already mentioned Oklahoma's very best. There's also in strawberry fields. Okay, now I'm gonna give you just a little minute here to, uh, if you are coloring with your colored pencils, or if you are painting, give you just a second to catch up and do some of that yourself. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry while we work on a landscape item and then we'll mess with that a little bit more. The next thing I'm going to do is this um, 3D landscape. And so you use a piece of construction paper. It can be green or brown, whatever color, but we're, we're wanting it to look like land. And so um, you fold it in half this direction. nice and creased and then you fold this half back toward you flip it over and fold this half back toward you so that you really have a, a fan fold like this then open it up and you can have students draw a line or just free cut, but they need a dot up here where they're going to start up on the top left and a dot down here toward the bottom right. And we're going from there to there and we're just going to make it a curved line going different directions. So we'll go down and up, down, up, down, up, down, like that. And then they'll cut along this line. I'm not doing a very good job. I'm kind of at a strange angle with this camera. Now, hold it back together like that. And I can see some of my line there. Which I don't like, so I'm cutting it off. These are um, hills, very slight hills. We don't have great big mountains too much in Oklahoma. But as you're doing this kind of lesson, you can talk, maybe you've been teaching about um, communities or um, different areas of the country. Maybe you're a third grade teacher and you're doing Oklahoma history and places in Oklahoma. But we're gonna talk about um, soil and uh, sod and all kinds of things. And so as 
they start decorating this. I um, have construction paper crayons and you can get them in individual boxes or you can order the class set. And the class set is much more reasonable. Like the whole set of construction paper crayons, which would have 25 of each of the colors and there's 16 colors is like $34. So it's not bad at all. So, they have a little different wrapper on them and they say construction paper crayons. And that way you can color with them and it's really vibrant. So on my first little hill level, I'm gonna use a bright green and I'm, I'm drawing things a little bigger, like close up I can see stems and grass and things like this. Things that are far farther away, I'm gonna have to draw smart, smaller. So you can talk about things that are in the foreground, things that are in the background, and so I'm kind of making grass and stems, and maybe this is a field of wildflowers. And then you can talk about Oklahoma's wildflowers and Indian blanket and all that kind of stuff. And then you just make more and more. Since it's wild, I'm not trying to have it in rows because you can talk about rows on the next part when we're going to try to have the next section be perhaps a field with crop in it. So get smaller up here and well that's not the green I wanted but shading along that hill line like maybe a shadow and they can tell and then add color and it can for your little kids you know it can just be dots of color here and there for their wildflower field. Bigger dots up front, smaller dots back here. Maybe some blue, more green, different shade of green, however you wanna do it. And then the next section, we're gonna uh, maybe talk about having rows of things like um, maybe this is a, a wheat field back here. So I wanna show that there's some dirt and I wanna show, I, you can just decide what you want it to be as far as is it wheat that's green or wheat that's golden, but kind of help them create rows and make the rows get closer together the further away that they get. Not quite so vivid. And then maybe it's, it's wheat when it's golden. And so I'm just going to be coloring rows of that as we go along this section. Oops. And you can, of course, if you've got older kids and you want to add more details with the stalks of wheat and the heads of wheat, that's okay too. And again, when you come to this level that we're changing, uh, you might put some kind of little shadow or line to help see that this is going up to the next level. All right, so further on, we might want to have uh, some kind of water source, like a river. And it is wider here and narrower up that way. Perhaps there's uh, grasses and trees nearby. Anyway, you just, ha you have them decorate design each section however they want to, but you get a lot of discussion about agriculture while we're doing this. Uh, and the far one, we can talk about um, some of our areas of the state that are a little more hilly. 
and you can talk about how um, shadows from hills and mountains sometimes look purple when we get that part in the song about purple mountains majesty why it has a little bit of a purple cast to it because of sunshine and shadow anyway they decorate this uh, with the different levels and when they stand it up it's it's their 3d landscape they can also open this up and create a whole um, town or a whole farmyard scene or a city even um, they want to add a lot of animals grazing or whatever they want to do they can also cut out and add houses and when you do that remind them if it's close up it's going to be a little bit bigger house if it's further away a little smaller house then you glue this onto white so that you can do your background the sky and the sun and clouds or however they want to do that one so i'm just going to give you a minute to try okay well when we had to do distance learning uh for and i was teach i'm teaching part-time for dover i just did videos from this room in my house and made them pretty short like three to five or six minutes and the kids could watch them and then watch it more slowly or watch it again so they could do the art project because of course this is way faster than i would go with students for sure and if we were doing this live at the ag and classroom conference of course i would go more slowly and i'd be walking around and checking your work and all that so here we go with the pair i like to use a light green paper and let that be part of the color <coughs> there's a lesson called a pair of pairs on the ag and the classroom site and I know um, there is a, <coughs> excuse me, pretty sure there's a smart board lesson about um, homonyms with pair, I think, pretty sure. All right, so get the pair shape. Sometimes I have kids start with like three fingers, but tell them we're not tracing each finger, we're just kind of gonna round that. And so I, like I said, I would normally do it lighter, but I'm doing it a little darker, hopefully so you can see. <clears throat> and then think about how tall your pair is gonna be. And for their little hands, I'd say about your hand. And so here's the bottom of the pair. But we're gonna get wider before we go out to the, to the bottom. So come down, we're still kind of skinny, go wider, touch your bottom shape in out well that's not my best but oh well <coughs> lisa this is Emily. yes i'm going to interrupt you real quick uh, we okay. had somebody ask what is your youtube channel called uh oh um, it's not really a, i've just posted some to youtube and they all start with the words dover art dover art Okay. Uh -huh. So it's like Dover art strawberry, Dover art cupcake, whatever. So they all they all start with Dover art. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Okay, so if you haven't used oil pastels, they're pretty fun. You can get a whole box of them. Or if you have a big class, several boxes. And they're messier than crayons so it depends on the age of your kids if you really want to do this or not but they they come wrapped with paper to keep your hands cleaner but that doesn't mean the paper's going to stay on you know just like crayons somehow the paper disappears all right so oil pastels <clears throat> blend in with each other well so for example if i'm going to start with a little bit of the darker color down here in the base of the pair, like this. Then I can go to a little lighter color right on top of it. And you see how it's kind of smearing together? It's very waxy. Um, and you can even use a blender, like a white 
to blend some of these in together. Smooths out the color, fills in spaces. And you can also use a piece of tissue paper. So if I'm going to make this side a little more yellow, Got some of the green going here. Then you get a little piece of wadded up tissue paper. White's probably the best, but I don't have any white, so I just have some green tissue paper. Wad that up. And you do your smearing and blending with that. So you don't get your hands quite so messy. Like that. Um, then you finish coloring in the pair. And again, I think I might have a little oh, white area, like a re light reflection up at the top somewhere. But again, I would have it blended in. So when you're talking about this, and talking about pears, I definitely would have a, a taste testing something or other going on because there are kids that just haven't eaten pear. They've eaten apple, and banana, and strawberries, and watermelon, and all of that, but they're not as familiar with pear. And because of its mm, kind of lackluster color after you cut it and chunk it up, they think it's going to be something not so good. Lisa, I believe that we have one um, person who'd like to share their artwork. Do you mind if I turn your camera on? It's great. All right, let me get back to, t um, let's see. Taryn, do you have um, artwork? She had her hand raised up a little bit ago. I do, and I'm not an art person. But You'll have to start your video. I think it's great that some of you are trying this out. I'm not an artist either. Lisa's amazing. Um, she makes it look easy. And it really is whenever you try the steps as she's doing it. Tarn, are you able to turn your video on? No, I am not able to turn my okay, video let on. Let me, me mute you for just a second and then we'll see if we can help you get it figured out and we'll let Lisa go back. So as you can see, this also could be an avocado. So uh, you could talk about pears or talk about avocados. If you shape it just a little, little bit differently. All right, so here we go. Um, the stem. Of course, we've got to have a little stem here. And you could also show um, some works of art where they've used pears and apples as their still life. And that gets them more excited about trying to do the art. All right, another thing you can use instead of oil pastels or crayons or colored pencils is chalk. Again, that's something messy and it gets on your hands, but you can, um, well, let's just maybe do a plum. You start coloring with the chalk and the thing about chalk is that you can blend it. Okay, Lisa, I've got Torin. I'm gonna let her share real quick while you're blending. Okay. Torin, if you'll say, um, unmute yourself and say something, then your picture will go large so everyone can see your artwork for just a second. Lisa can get a glance at it too, I believe. You can tell I'm not an artist, but um, I did do a little bit on each of the different things. And so I also put some of the instructions on the bottom part, so. Oh, cool. 
So there's not too much to it, but it was really good because like I said, I am not an artist at all. So thank you very much for all you did. Oh, good. Great. I'm glad right, you thanks liked for it. sharing. All right. Again, on the um, chalk, you can use a piece of tissue paper to blend that and rub that in so that your fingers aren't quite as messy. And when you're using chalk or oil pastel, a lot of times I tell my students to start at the top of the design and work their way down so that their hands not rubbing over the bottom part that they have already done. You can use a combination of things like this is chalk and maybe I'm adding a little bit of oil pastel to it <clears throat> and putting a little bit of um, pinkish blend up there at the top. Oops, that's really red. And you can also add a little stem on that. <clears throat> Short. All right, so now back to our watercolor that we tried. As it is drier, you go back with a pencil or um, colored pencil or crayon and add some um, of the seeds, just little ones here and there. And then you're gonna add a little yellow, tiny bit of yellow beside each of those dots that you've drawn. And that can be with the watercolor or you can add just a little bit of crayon yellow beside that seed. It gives it a little bit of uh, dimension and like it's um, sunk in a little. And then when you look at your leaves and you're thinking, well, I really wanted a, it to look more like a leaf and not this um, flat design. Well, now that it's dry, you can go back in and add some more color to it to deepen it and make it more defined. You do the same to the strawberry. And this little um, baby strawberry up here, we'll give it a little bit more. And it's starting to have a few little dots on it as well. Sorry, my two designs ran together so much there. Um, on a vine, on a strawberry, you can talk about there'll be leaves up here that, you know, there's not yet a strawberry. And so you could even paint some larger leaves up here get some water oops that's supposed to be pointed okay so i've just had quite a bit of fun this summer messing around with uh watercolor. I'm, I'm not great at it, but I do have fun with it. So I do hope you will try some watercolor and the watercolor paper really does make a difference. And of course with my students, I don't give them this whole big piece. I would cut it in half because I want them to stretch further and um, plus they don't need to, you know, use uh, the watercolor and because they want to color up the whole entire space. Um, when you're doing a background, <clears throat> like we, we did some strawberries and uh, we talked about doing a background, you, again, try to, try to stay away from the area that you've already painted because you don't want that running together. And you water down, water down, water down the areas that you want. And then barely put in color. Like I, I just decided since the berries were red and green, I mean the strawberries then maybe the rest of it should be something totally different. And I didn't want to use blue because, oh, kids get really carried away with the darkness of blue and they'll, they will make it very dark blue. And then you can't focus on what the item was that you painted. 
So sometimes I have them do pink or yellow as a background. And um, sometimes they want to smooth out something like this where the colors have blended. I'm like, no, no, it looks perfect like that. Let it sit there until it dries. And as it dries, it puddles and it makes um, something that's quite interesting. Said that she can't find the YouTube. If you'll search for Lisa Storm and Dover Art on YouTube, that's what I've searched for and we've been able to find it. And we'll also, everyone, um, after the conference, we will um, post resources and send out a link to it. And so um, we'll include in that links to Lisa's other YouTube videos because they are uh, great videos and we know that you'll enjoy them. So we'll, we'll do that. It looks like um, somebody just posted the link to one of her videos. So um, thank you for doing that. It went by quickly. I'm not sure who that was, but we appreciate it. Lisa, we also had a question come in. Uh, what ages would you do these projects with? Okay, I have done the pairs with first grade, first, second, and third. And first graders did just perfectly fine. Their pairs, of course, don't look the perfect pear shape, but that's okay. And I have done the landscape thing where you cut. <clears throat> I've also done that with first through fourth. Um, let's see, kindergarten, I've done plums with, but I believe we did um, crayons and colored pencils. I do let kindergartners use colored pencils after we learn how to use them and slant them and shade with them, and they have a good time with that. Um, We've done all kinds of fruits, of course, with kindergartens or kindergarten with markers, which they love. And uh, the chalks, not so much with the little bitties. Um, third through sixth, I, do, I teach pre-K through sixth. And so, you know, pre-K is a circus, uh, just to say. But <laughs> third through sixth, they can do the watercolor they love the watercolor and we talk about how privileged we are to get to have watercolor paper and keep our paints nice and um, clean off your brush between and try not to slip slop around whatever also did you know that on your paint this little lid that has sections to it could also be for mixing some colors. So I, if I wanted to mix a color, like I would pull over some red like this and then clean off my brush and maybe pull over the orange, dip some more like that and do a little mixing and then use it like that. So even if you just have the very basic colors and the, the more inexpensive watercolors, that's fine. And you can create lots of other different colors by mixing them here on the side. Of course, then you have to clean it up, but that's okay too. Um, I see, you probably noticed I had a blue paper towel. Those are shop towels and you can cut them in half and they're just a whole lot more absorbent than a regular paper towel. And, um, you know, like when I tore off this little piece to dab up, I, I, kept, I can keep using that same little piece. So let your kids use the stuff, and, but you do have to prepare them by talking about, you know, how we're going to take care of our supplies. And the brushes, of course, they want to smash down too hard. And you're like, oh, no, it's not like a pencil or a marker or a crayon. It's different. You know, we're, we're just barely touching and we're, we're not going to do the the big smash thing and we have to practice with that but it's amazing if you have um, higher expectations of kids they tend to get there uh, Lisa we had a question come in um, do you have any good instructions for the colored pencils oh and how to use colored pencils yes. okay like let's see me think of something that we've done oh also if you're if you're uh, demonstrating and pulling out um, things with famous artists and you want to talk about Van Gogh's sunflowers he just loved and loved to do sunflowers 
Um, let me do with red and then we'll, because you're not going to be able to see the yellow. Um, <clears throat> we did a Lisa. lot of sunflowers with colored pencils. And uh, we always talk about coloring lightly. I do have some kids, even sixth graders, that want to color very dark with colored pencils. And I talk to them about how long it's going to take them to get that done if they're going to use dark. And so we do light, 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 keep it going the same direction, the same direction. And we overlap color, like with the yellow. Keeping it going the same direction and you slant it. You don't hold it straight up and down like this. We've, we've got to slant. Let's see, I don't think I have an orange right here. Just while you're working on that, um, we've had, anyway, people say that you did an awesome job. Also, oh, thank you for you to make a video using uh, kind of with basic instructions for different crafting supplies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, anyway, they want more videos. And then also, do you have a preferred brand of watercolor or pastels? There is a Crayola that you can order and I've ordered it from Blick Art Supply and I believe I've had it from Amazon and it's Crayola but it's um, it's a little bit more artist quality and it has a better brush. It has a black brush with a nice you know tip on it instead of those awful awful little cheap um, yellow ones. So I, it was a Crayola, but it was more of a like art student classroom or something like that. Okay, thank you. And I can't, I mean, we just, you know, we go through supplies, so you can't have a lot of expensive supplies. And so for crayons, and I'm sure every teacher would agree with me, Crayola is the best. I've even tried to use Faber-Castell because someone put, you know, that that was better for art, but I didn't like it. It's, it's pretty waxy, and I just didn't like it as, as well as Crayola. Um, Lisa, you just have about three minutes left, but I wanted to let you know that you may have inspired a new book today, because April Schrader commented and said, if you make a teacher an avocado, she's going to start thinking about guacamole, and if she thinks about guac, she's going to want some chips, and eating <laughs> chips will remind her she wants a margarita. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and after the first margarita, she wants a second. <laughs> That sounds like a great book. <laughs> Lisa, well, I just, yes. Do you have kids bring their own watercolors or do you supply them for your class? We have, we supply them in the classroom. Okay. But again, I'm at Dover and the classroom, the classes are very small. Um, but I can make these watercolors for sure last all year long. Uh, the yellow gets used up, the blue gets used up, but, um, they last a long time if you, you know, make sure that the kids take care of them. Colored pencils last a long time and you have a, a really good sharpener. I have an electric sharpener and it maybe takes two seconds to get something sharpened in that. And you just take care of your stuff and it, it lasts. I even, we have rules about crayons too. I mean, but everything is, is in the classroom and this year, we're going to be leaving it out and have it sprayed at the end of the day and kids will be putting um, hand gel on their hands before they come in my classroom and we're going to try our best to, to keep everybody safe but still get to do art. Um, I just appreciate everybody coming to this workshop and I so was looking forward to seeing excited teacher faces and working with you today but um, I appreciate you coming and watching Ag and Art.